Hey everybody, welcome back to Kindred Spirits on the Roof. Last time we got to hang out with Miu and Matsuri and do things. And by things I mean sex. It was eventful in its own way, I guess. I don't know, those two have like gone down in popularity with me, unfortunately, because of their bickering. But, you know, some good things came from it. Like uh, Hina realizing she was in love with Yuna, so can't can't complain too much. And uh, we're, we've moved on from that, too, thankfully. Oh, man, thankfully. And I'm really kind of sad, actually, because we have one more month after this. And I... This has been so much fun. Like, seriously, for anyone who's wa been watching these, even if you've only watched, like, nine minutes of one video, and I don't even care if you've watched any of this with me, thank you so much. Like, I've had so much fun doing this. And if, if people are listening and enjoying it too, that makes it all the better. <sighs> God, I'm just putting this off because I don't want to play anymore because I know we're getting to the end. And I know there are bonus, scene bonus scenes out there that we unlock, but I, I can't handle this. And I mean, yeah, I can't handle this. I, I don't even know if I'm going to record the bonus scenes. If you want me to record the bonus scenes with my crazy commentary, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll do it. But at this moment, I don't know if I'm actually going to record them. I'm definitely going to play through them, but I don't know if I'm going to record them. But if, the, if that is something you'd like to see, please let me know. Anyways, let's... We gotta, we gotta get through this. We gotta see how this is gonna end, right? I say this like we're in November. We're not. We're we're in October still, but it's 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 getting there. This this line, my emotions are all a mess. Really sums up how I feel right now. Oh, my emotions are all a mess. I'm nervous and a little excited and maybe a little guilty. Those are the emotions rolling inside me as I stand in the kitchen now, my hands moving to prepare our lunches. Today is the last day of October. This month was emotionally intense, with ups and downs like a roller coaster, and that's only speaking for me. The school after the festival settled into a quiet peace, like it was breathing out after the busy festival. The only tension in the air was a tinge of nervousness as the first semester finals approached. After exams ended, though, everyone was back to relaxing. And we didn't have anyone to help anymore either, so all those busy, hectic days were over. It was just a month of me reeling from the shock of Hina's confession and stumbling to find my answer for her. My thoughts all ground to a halt when she confessed to me, and after that I worried and wavered, completely messing up my tempo. I worried everyone around me, like Ano, and even Sachi-san and Megumi may have gotten anxious, anxious by the end. When I finally found my answer for Hina, it was like a huge weight was lifted. I realized how irreplaceable she is to me, and I gained my own sweetheart, Hina. That October is over today. Tomorrow, November 1st, is the anniversary of the establishment of our school, a holiday, Normally, that would be something to celebrate, a day off from school that isn't a weekend or a national holiday. But I can't feel celebratory about it. That emotion has been pushed out by nervousness, excitement, and guilt, and a dash of unease, too. As for why, well, that's because this is the day of our promise. Tonight, our promise with Sachi-san and Megumi... Tonight we'll sneak into the school and stay over in secret. Wow, you know, you're just jumping right into this. I'm a little surprised. I I certainly wouldn't, I would be way too self-conscious for my first time to be like, yeah, let's have two spirits possess us while we do it. I don't know. I would, <laughs> I would totally be like, no, you two wait until we have sex for a second time. At least the second time we have sex, not the first time. I managed to keep my hands moving, but I couldn't stop my face from turning red. I know I was the one who proposed the idea, but I can barely believe the promise I've made. The two kindred spirits' goal is to have a happy first time and to pass on. They dragged me into helping them so they could achieve that goal. 
and thanks to our effort, it seems they've gained the knowledge they needed to do so. Sometime after the school festival ended, the mood between them felt right, and they attempted to have their first time. But they said they couldn't touch each other since they're both spirits, so they couldn't do it even if they wanted to, basically. The idea they came up with, then, was for the two of them to possess Hina and me and have their first time that way. I sort of wish they hadn't gone and decided that on their own, but since they really had no other ideas, I guess I can't blame them for pursuing it seriously. And after I finally replied to Hina's confession, I proposed the idea myself, wanting to do it for their sakes. I thought about it a bit before, but... That was really an incredible promise, wasn't it? It's too late to regret it now, and I don't intend to, but even if we're lending them our bodies, physically it means that Hina and I will be doing that sort of thing. That's why I'm nervous. Yeah, and that's why like, I don't understand why you're letting them possess you during your first time. It just seems so awkward. More awkward than a first time needs to be, you know? A first time is actually... <laughs> The first time is awkward enough, and now you're going to invite two spirits to join you. <laughs> the reason for my guilt is because I'm lying to my parents, since I can't exactly tell them, okay, I'm going to go Okay, I'm gonna go sneak into school, get possessed by ghosts, and have sex with Hina. Yeah, that is definitely not something you can, you can tell anyone, really. I've told them Hina and I will be staying over at Anno's house tonight, and Anno said she'd play along. I'd be with Hina, and Anno stays over here a lot, so my mom and dad both allowed that without any questions. Hina's mom and dad said she said the same. It's probably the ease with which they agreed that's causing all my guilt. The unease I'm feeling is because of tonight, of course. Lending our bodies to ghosts for one thing, but... Also, no matter the circumstances, Hina and I... I know, I know, but... I know they couldn't come up with any other way. I know this will be fine. Hina's agreed too, but, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised Hina just agreed so, so easily, unless she doesn't really believe Yuna. I mean, that could always be true. She could just be playing along and be thinking like, oh boy. If, uh, I guess if this is what Yuna needs is to believe that there are two ghosts that keep her company on the roof and they want to possess us so they can have sex. If, that, if that's what you need, Yuna, I guess I love you enough to accept it. <laughs> this is who you chose, Hina. Girl's crazy. Actually, she's not. We know Yuna's not crazy. The kindred spirits actually exist, but... <laughs> I just I just wonder what's like going through Hina's mind because she can't see the kindred spirits or anything, you know, unless she's really that trusting, which, you know, it is, you know, we're talking about. They've known each other for their whole lives, so you would tend to trust someone like that, I assume. With exams done, all the subjects we're studying are reset and we head into new chapters in our textbooks. I copy my teacher's writing on the blackboard into my notebook. Classes as usual, with just a hint of excitement in the air for the holiday tomorrow. As the day dragged along, morning classes finally ended. I left the classroom for lunch, parting with Anno so I could make a brief stop, stop by the home economics room first. Ah, Sukiyo-chan, what do I do? What do I do? Come on, calm down, Tsurugamini-san. What's going on? Oh, Tomi-san. Um, there was a first-year girl who was interested in the math club's quizzes during the school festival, and she decided to officially join the club. She was a trial member before, but now she's going to start coming every day after school as a real member. What do I do, Tomi-chan? Huh? Ah, uh, I'm not sure what you do. You'll be your senpai, Surugamini-san, and the club president too, of course. Ah, uh, I'm so nervous. I've never been a senpai before. How should I talk to her, Tomi-chan? How? You don't have to be so nervous. Shouldn't you just talk to her normally, like you have been during her trial membership? But what if I say something weird to her and she quits on the spot? It'll be okay. 
Sono-sensei said, encouraging Tsurugamini-san with a little pat on the back. Tsurugamini-san, who confessed to an older woman, a teacher, and Sono-sensei, who accepted her feelings. It looks like their one advisor, one president math club will be getting a little more crowded soon. I met the two of them on my way to the home ec room. I kind of wish we, we knew who the first year who joined the math club would be. I thought for sure it might have been a character we knew, but the only first years we really know are Sena and Hina, and I don't think it's either of them, right? I think we would have. I think we would have known. It's kind of. It just feels like that should be an important character, but it is a little late in the story to be to be setting up more significant characters. Eh, oh well. Oh, is that right? I'm sorry, I should have checked beforehand when we were still over there. It's fine, let's get going. Oh, you're already retired, Miki-san. You don't need to carry anything. I'll hold it all. You don't have to worry so much. I insist. I'd be happy if you came with me, though. Yes, of course. Which reference room, then? She said either one, so let's put it in the first one, since the inner one has our secret place. Yes, let's do that. Maki-san's helping someone out today, like always, with Aihara-senpai who's retired from the beautification committee by her side. That's some really awkward sentencing. I have to wonder if it sounds better in Japanese and maybe if it's like language syntax differences that make some of these sentences come out really awkward. She's giving a guiding hand to Maki-san, who's valiantly taking on the work Senpai would have been getting all on her own. I spotted them right after leaving the home ec room near the entrance hall. Oh, Yuna! Right! You should look at this too, Yuna! What's this, a guitar catalog? Yep, we're picking out a guitar for Aki. Which one do you think would fit her best, Yuna? You play guitar, are you, son? I've been interested in it for a while, but Yoka was so has so much fun playing hers, I thought I'd give it a try, too. In your hands, I bet you'll get a sweet sound pouring out right away, Aki, and one day we'll form a duo and rock out on stage together. Do you two really mean that? Yoka seems serious. I wonder how serious aryo san is. It's hard to imagine her really going and standing up on stage with Yoka. But strange as these two look together, they're, they really seem to be enjoying their conversation. Aryo-san's having fun watching Yoka with all her energy. I gave them a wave and left the tatami room. What were we even doing in the tatami room? We went to the home at class, we came back, I'm pretty sure... What, what were we doing in there? Was, did, did, does Yuna just feel obligated to check up on, on every couple? She, you know, she's helped. You, you know, you got to check up on these things. You've invested so much time in it. You might as well make sure everything's going smoothly, smoothly for everyone, right? Oh, yes. Oh, I hope we get Matsuri Miyu <laughs> guidance to Yuna. Because I have to know, right? At this point, they have to know that Hina confessed. I hope so. Or, I, I mean, they do know Hina confessed. They have to know that Yuna accepted, right? That Hina return or that Yuna returns Hina's feelings? I hope so. I hope you get some, like, gentle senpai teasing right now. I know, but if you're going to complain, you don't have to come with me. I'm the only one who needs to use the computer lab, after all. You don't have to be so cold. Hello, Amashima senpai, Inamoto senpai. Oh, Yunichan! Listen to this, Yunichan. We finally retired from the team, but now Miyu's trying to get me to study and stuff. Hello, Yunichan. Listen, Matsuri. Even with a scholarship, you still have to take the exams. We'll have to do interviews, too. I know, I know. It's just a bit longer, so put up with it. Yeah, yeah. See you, Yunichan. Later. Amashima um, senpai and Inamoto senpai are a perfect duo as always. They've still got the presence of third year students, even after retiring from the track team. And since they've been together for so long, they're hardly reserved at all. 
I mean that in a good way. I pass by the two who learn to accept each other in the hallway. Oh, hey! We haven't seen Umi and Sasa in, like, forever! I miss these two. Ah, I'm so happy we get to see them again. Well, what's going on? What do you mean? Our noon broadcast is about to start. Come on, Nana, hurry it up! Of course, it's a broadcast day that we get class extended. Oh, yeah, Yuna. I ran into Ano and... Nana, there's no time to talk. Come on, we've got to go. Ah, we're on the air in two minutes. Good, good luck. Mm-hmm. See ya. That's kind of funny. I wonder what Nana and Ano talked about. I bet you Ano could have told Nana about what was going on with Yuna and Hina. Maybe, since they seem to be pretty close friends. By the way, which brings up something that I've been thinking of regarding friendship and this game, and specifically with Ano and Yuna. So I do really like how this game presents friendship, and I like that the romantic relationships don't seem to eclipse it, because a lot of times I think you expect in stories like these for the friends to get put like get pulled by the wayside of the rom of the development of a, rom of a romantic relationship but what's cool about the broadcasting trio is that they seem they they seem healthy enough to exist as friends and then as you know sasa and umi and nana right so that's really cool but specifically with ano and yuna uh and friendship right does does um with Anna and Yuna is really great too, because Anno could have easily just been this comedic rel relief character who didn't really play much of a significant part in the story, except she does, right? Because Yuna confides in her and Anno provides advice, and you see Anno, you know, care a lot for Yuna when she notices that she's struggling. But what I find so interesting is that Anno calls Yuna by her first name throughout the entire game, but Yuna always just refers to Anno by her family name, Anno. Which I think is a really interesting telling, uh, telling piece of their relationship and how it seems to me that Anno looks at Yuna and goes, oh, we're friends, but Yuna has really struggled with that idea up to recently. And that's why she probably, I assume, just calls her Anno. Though, after seeing that moment with Nana, it seems like Nana even calls her Anno, yet Nana seem except they seem really close, so I don't know if that was intentional or not. But anyways, I headed to the roof to eat lunch. And this is cute too, because they're going to the roof to eat lunch, so this is a nice, like, coming full circle, almost. Because we started, because when we met Yuna, she was on the roof alone eating lunch, and now we're on the roof, but we're not alone. We have Anno, Hina, and the two kindred spirits, and that's that's kind of a nice little little touch. It sounded like she noticed something, so I asked her what it was while she helped me with the sheet. The spirits kind of seem a little different today. You can tell? No, um, it's not really like I can tell, but they're like a little differently colored than before. It, it's just a bit, and it's like only a feeling, really. Really. We'd taken our seats on the laid out blanket and I turned to Sachi-san and Megumi. It would be a bit tight, but the three of us could have all fit on a bench. If it were only Ano, Hina, and me, that is. But I wanted to eat with everyone today. I brought the blanket so the five of us could sit together. I figured we wouldn't get in trouble if we cleaned up properly afterward, and Megumi now accompanying us on the blanket had a response for Ano. Th th that's not true at all. I guess they are a little different. D d don't get co cocky just because you can see us a little bit. <laughs> oh, Yuna laughed! We've never seen Yuna laugh. I don't think we've ever seen Yuna laugh. That's so great. We've come so far, Yuna. What, what's so funny, Yuna? Sorry, you're just really jittery, Megumi. What's wrong? N nothing's wrong. She's been like this since this morning. She's quite anxious about today, I think. Ah. 
So she gets nervous too, I thought. I felt the same way, a bit nervous, but seeing Megumi so flustered was a little relaxing. Or rather, tonight. I keep telling her not to think about it so much, but I suppose she'd be anxious either way. She won't last if she's this restless, though. Oh, but I don't think there's any helping her thinking about it. This sort of thing is important for girls, you know. I don't think it's very good to be so conscious of it, of course, but... Is Sachi-san nervous, too? They've always seemed to do whatever they please to me, but I guess they get those feelings, too. Thinking that kind of makes me feel relieved. Yunane, I'm hungry. Right, right. And then there's Hina. Since she can't see the kindred spirits, she won't be bothered by their restlessness. Her composure is helping me calm down, too. Here you go. Huh? My. I'd pack some hot sandwiches for Hina and Ano, and some things I'd made for Sachi-san and Megumi. Spaghetti carbonara! And Imo... Imonomasu, you remember Dina-san. Yes, I had a little arrange. I had to do a little arranging of the recipes, though. I couldn't exactly pack perfect spaghetti carbonara for lunch. I cooked the pasta and set it aside, then made the sauce separately and heated it up in the microwave in the home ec room. Ah, that's what we were doing in there. I guess it never occurred to me why you know had to go to the home ec room until now. It can pass for carbonara like this, though it might be a bit different from Megumi's idea of the dish. As long as I put some cheese and pepper on it, it'll look good, and it should taste good, too. For Sachi-san's Imo Namasu request, I found a, a recipe on the internet and practiced it a few times. You chop potatoes into thin strips, soak them in water, and then fry them, seasoning them with vinegar, sugar, and a little salt. I wasn't sure if the sugar or the vinegar was supposed to go in first, so I tried it both ways. If you put the vinegar in first, they come out a bit crispier, so that's what I used today. That didn't really feel like enough, so I also tried making some namul style and sesame with sesame oil, and some marinade style with onions and olive oil. Man, that sounds good. Ugh, I want that right now for lunch. I hope you like the arrangement, Sachi-san. They look delicious. I would love to have some. Come on, Yunisan, hurry, hurry. Yes, yes. Sachi-san seems pretty pleased. She's practically on top of me, clinging to my back. Megumi's glaring kind of bothers me, but... Let's see. We all put our hands together and dug into our lunches. Oh, how I've missed this. It tastes wonderful. I love the texture. Good. Sounds like I was right to prioritize the texture. Mm, how's the flavor? I did a lot of research, but without a reference. What I used to eat a lot was a bit sweeter, but this is very good too. It's nice that the vinegar isn't too harsh. That might be because the flavor of vinegar has changed since Sachi's time, perhaps. Next, um, should I have the Namul style or the marinade style? Yuna, I'd like to eat too, you know. Hurry up or it'll get cold. Tell Sachi-san, I only have one body. I didn't think they'd be fighting over my body like this. Megumi tasted the Imo Namasu too, despite her complaining. Whoa, what happened there? Did you see those lights? They just like turn into light? Oh dear, it looks like the ghosts are stuck right up against Yuna. Can you see them, Hina-chan? No. Your Yunane is the center of attention. Hmm, Yunane being popular is only natural, though. Ano, don't make fun of me while I've got my hands full of Sachi-san and Megumi. What about Hina? She's making a bit of an unusual face. One I haven't seen much of before. You're not jealous. Hmm, not really. Nah, Hina's probably just like contemplating how crazy Yuna might be at this point. <laughs> I don't know, if I, was in, if I was in Hina's position, I would certainly be thinking this is a huge joke or something. Or maybe I misjudged Yuna, who, which would be weird if we had been that close our whole lives, but I just, I'd feel so awkward. I'd be like, I can't see anything. My girlfriend's talking to two spirits, but I don't know. It kind of just looks like she's talking to herself. 
At least you're good at cooking, Yuna. What does at least mean? Not that I really have any other skills. Can I have some of that too, Yunane? Yeah, sure. M me too, me too. Hina and Ano reached out to the co to the carbonara and Imonamasu as well. Ah, hey, don't take so much. That's for me, you know. Hey, Megumi, stop pulling. I made a lot to share. But, but... And I can't eat enough for both of you by myself anyway. Unison, the marinade next. Marinade. Ah, jeez. To everyone else, it's just the three of us sitting on this blanket, eating together. But to me, it's the first time I've eaten with all these people at once. I could have never imagined this half a year ago. Eating like this, chatting, making noise together. When we'd finished, we enjoyed some candy Anno had brought, and we sat around, spacing out, talking about this and that, until it was time for afternoon classes. I gotta say, this game does a really good job at, like, painting a very romanticized or idealized uh, high school experience. It's something that I don't, I generally don't connect with in a lot of stories. I mean, I haven't really connected to a high school narrative since, you know, I was in high school and maybe a little af a little bit after, like in my, er like maybe early 20s, but not for that much longer. And this is actually a really good example, I think, of a nice idealized high school narrative. Because I wish I could have played this at 16. And 16-year-old 16 me is jumping for joy every time I turn on this game because this is... This is like a good example of what you of what you kind of wish your high school experience is like when you're in high school. Like I certainly don't have those thoughts now. As an adult, I look back at high school and I go, that was such a small part of my life, like I don't even care. But you know when you're in high school, you kind of want something that's a little less mundane and a little and and something that sort of is a I don't want to say less uncomfortable, but I think because when you're in your teenager years, there's just a lot of unease and discomfort and things are going, and time is going so slowly and things are just mundane and there's not a lot and you don't feel like there's a lot going on and you don't know what's going on, that it's nice to have, um, it's nice to have like these, these fantasies about what you expect your life to be and and it's and, it, and you romanticize and you fantasize about it and you idealize stuff and so to have like this and so to have narratives like kindred spirits that sort of present this this romanticized version of high school to someone it's it can be very fulfilling and satisfying i think for people i think that's what people like so much why people like things like clanad so much and clanad personally i've never been able to emotionally connect with but the people who i do know who love it seem to have seem to like it for at least partly for that reason of it's it's kind of like an exciting uh, it's kind of like what you th when you're in high school, what you kind of imagine your your life to be like, you know, all these mundane these these so these mundane trivial activities get packed with so much meaning and emotion, and it's so much more exciting and fulfilling when you're that age, at least. Um, I don't think it so much is at this age, but I I think Kindred Spirits does a good job of like giving me that feeling. I imagine people who who love Clannad and other high school like romanticized high school narratives. Uh, feel and so it's very cool and I like it and again I just I just wish I had this when I was 16 I would have loved to play be playing it as a teenager I'm just lending them my body even if I know it's not really going to be me doing it I can't help but feel self-conscious I want to be as clean as possible I'm trying my hardest to avoid the specifics but I can't help being conscious of it all it feels like the time is finally here after the end of classes, I went home for a bit and took a bath. Now I just needed to head back to school again while everyone else is leaving. Hina's just staying behind since she's got practice. She's going to shower afterward, right? Should I have mentioned it? Should I send her a text? Yes, please send her a text, Hina. Because <laughs> Hina's not having any thoughts whatsoever 
you know, I'm sure he calmed down, you know, I'm sure Hina's gonna shower. <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty sure I've been thinking about nothing but this all day. I feel like I've been thinking about it while telling myself, act natural, act natural, all day. Not that I can really do anything about it now. I sighed and tried to switch gears. There's still a bit of time before I have to head back to school, so I should find something to do with it. First, we'll be at school the whole night until tomorrow morning. So I need to make some dinner to bring with me, and Hina will be hungry after practice. It might be embarrassing if she eats too much and her stomach pops out, though, so I'll only make a bit. Being self-conscious for the both of you, huh? It would be best if it were something simple, so I could make onigiri and, or sandwiches, and I'll bring my toothbrush, Hina's too. That won't take too much work. Then I just have to make side dishes for mom and dad. I'll have to start on that right away. I might not have that much time after all. Going through the steps in my head, I was about to return to the kitchen when I stopped and stood in front of my dad. Oh, right! I totally forgot! The drawer with the lock that's locked! I remember that from the beginning, but I totally forgot about it until now. Oh my god, yeah, what's in the drawer? I plucked out a key from a bowl on my desk, the key to my desk drawer. I stuck it in the lock and turned it. There was a click. I pulled open the drawer, revealing a printed picture and certificate. The picture and certificate from back then. The picture we'd all taken together. I'm smiling in it, holding our trophy. Everyone in the club is smiling. We all took this picture after the award ceremony at the tournament. The camera had captured our innocent joy. I don't know why you lock it, the certificate. I can understand you don't want to necessarily look at the certificate in the picture because it brings back the memories, but I feel like locking it away is a little overdramatic. I retrieved the trophy from the box and set it out. It was a re replica I got to keep since we handed over the real one to the school, but it was a prize we'd all won together. I hadn't seen this trophy in a while, but it's a pretty typical design with the name of our school carved into the base. Since it was a replica, the ribbon's just a decoration. Are you are you okay now, Yuna? I guess so. I don't know. I guess I was kind of um I guess I was kind of wishing they would have done more with that uh that part of her story. I mean, to be fair, I don't know what else you would have done that wouldn't have been like not over dramatic, but eh. It to me it felt like they were really trying to plan something with Yuna. And like her not not uh not uh not tr not um God I'm saying not a lot excuse me and her like not living up to pe other people's expectations because they were kind of setting that up once we when she, when she had her confrontation with Ihara and I'm kind of sad like that never comes up again because it's like they kind of turned in to her conflict and the source of Yuna's pain being from oh she just heard some girls talk shit about her. But then it's and then it never gets. But it seemed like it was so much deeper than that when she confessed to Ihara that uh, I don't know. It just feels kind of shallow now, unfortunately. I always hated seeing it after that. That's why I put it away. It was painful to look at. I couldn't bear it. But now I'm fine. I'm a little more confident in myself now than I was back then. Yeah, see, and this whole thing about being confident right now, that had nothing to do with it, right? I don't know. This wasn't set up well enough, I think, to be now obsessing over the problem was confidence. I don't know. Maybe I just feel like it was set up for a completely different... They were trying to set up something completely different. Uh, hello? Oh, hey, Unichan. 
<laughs> you don't have to be so on edge yet. Oh, yes. I'm so excited. Oh, yes. Are we finally going to get that Miu Matsuri Medellin? I, I want more Medellin. <laughs> they say that, but students are supposed to be leaving in just a little bit. Heading back to school after their track practice ended, I'd gone straight to their club room in the Kumo Miyagara. I was relieved to find Amashima Senpai and Inamoto Senpai there waiting for me. The plan may have been to sneak into school at night, but it wasn't as if we could just waltz through the gate. I'd had the idea to hide somewhere before the gates closed and kill time until night, and coming up with no other options, I'd asked these two for help. Oh, why do I get a feeling you're totally gonna regret asking these two for help? Not in a big way, but uh, they, you know how they are. They're definitely not gonna let you get away without, without a little teasing. I'm sure. I'm sure it's coming. All I told them was that we wanted to stay over at school, so I'm not sure how to take their enthusiasm. It's a bit odd or embarrassing that they don't seem to have any questions. Oh please, I bet um, I bet I bet uh, me and Matsuri have stayed over at the school before too. Cause you know when you're young and you live with your parents, you gotta find somewhere to have sex, right? It makes more sense than doing it during the school day when like people are there. We told her to get herself cleaned up after all. Oh see, you don't have to worry, Yuna. When you got when you got uh, two senpai watching after your girlfriend, they're they're gonna make sure she she takes care of all that stuff. <laughs> I really feel like they know a bit too much, and I'm not sure how to respond to that. Ah, that's right. Here, Yunichan. Huh? Here, here are the keys to the club room and to the tower. You can get through the patrols by locking the door to the room and keeping the lights off. Then just make sure they're both locked when you're heading home tomorrow. You can give the keys to Hina. See, it sounds like these two have already done this before, so I bet you they've they've done they've spent the night here. Ah, oh, right. I'm surprised you've got a key to the building, though. <laughs> well, you see, it's a duplicate. It's passed down to the captains of the athletic clubs here, since it's convenient, you know. Huh? You you mean? The school has no idea, of course, officially, though they've probably figured it out, since there are teachers who used to go here, you know. But there's no problem as long as nobody gets in trouble using it. We're currently trying to do something that could get us in quite a lot of that, though. Just make sure you lock up afterwards, alright? Yes, thank you. I took the two keys from the Inamoto senpai If we wanted to back out, I think that option's gone now. There's no escape anymore. If those two know we're staying over, we can't just go back home. At this point, I'm only getting more nervous. I have to suppress the urge to imagine what we'll be doing after this. It might be Sachi-san and Megumi borrowing our bodies, but physically, it's still going to be us doing it. What, what sort of things are we going to do? Are they going to do? With Hina and me? Yunichan? I guess? You shouldn't be so nervous. Not that I can't empathize. Don't tease her too much, Matsuri. You'll only make her more anxious. I get the feeling my face looks as hot as it feels. And even if it doesn't, I get the feeling that these two can see right through me anyway. Well, you'll be with Hina, so just relax. You've slept together before, right? Just sleeping, that is. Y yeah. Uh, what am I doing giving her an honest answer? That much is the same, and then just think the rest is tickling a little. Oh man, that's one way of putting it, Matsuri. It's kind of hard to decide how concrete she's being, but the fact that I can imagine what she means is... Oh, and, uh, y yes? You don't need to force anything, okay? F force P Please don't, Amashima-senpai. Inamoto-senpai, could you stop her already? Stop it, Matsuri. Oh good, really, please help me. That's no way to give proper advice. Listen, Yunichan, there's no rule saying you need to let anything present. Oh my god, I'm sorry, you guys, I just... Oh, here we go, this is... <laughs> Fakers? And you'll be fine without using any tools. <laughs> oh my god, sorry, I can't read through this. This is so good. Oh. Right, right. Oh, and phones break easier than you'd think, so be careful, yeah? Uh, um... 
I've had enough of these two. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't expect them to, to give that kind of advice. But you know what? Good for them. Good for them. Because I would have loved it if women gave me advice on sex before I had my first time. Like, that was just something, as girls, where I grew up, you didn't talk about. So you know what? Good for them looking after Yuna and giving her some solid, forward, blunt advice about sex. But, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, I suppose we'll have that will have to be enough advice then. <laughs> but yes, this is what I wanted. I wanted them to like get involved and be good senpai, you know. But they're just teasing me. I feel a bit pathetic for letting them get a rise out of me. That's enough kidding around, right, Unichan? R right. I think you guys would be fine if you didn't end up doing anything too. Just hang out with Hina a little, you know. Yep, I'm sure Hina would have fun just chatting for the night. Uh-huh. If it were just going to be the two of us, that'd probably be fine. But tonight isn't just for us. It's for Sachi-san and Megumi. That's why we're here at school. Why we decided to spend the night here. It's not that I'm resolving myself to anything, but I try to think back to the feelings I had when I proposed this idea. Hmm, well, I'm sure it'll be fine. I just wanted to do whatever we could for them. I'm back. Ah, Yunane! The door opened and Hina stepped in. She walked over to me, her hair still wet from the shower. Oh, there you are, Hina. Hmm. Well, we'll see you two later. Ah, yes. Um, thank you again for today. It's fine. We're happy to help. See ya, Hina. You can do it. Hmm. <laughs> I love that. I just love the, the, the Matsuri Miu teasing. It's wonderful. Saying their farewells, Amashima Senpai and Inamoto Senpai left the room together. Hina and I were left alone, but in a little while, Sachi-san and Megumi should show up. Then we'll kill a little time here and wait for night. Sachi-san's and Megumi's night. Is this their idea of being considerate? Or are they teasing us? They told us we could go ahead and use this room on the second floor of the Kumo Miyagara, the room I stayed in during the summer camp. There were two futons nicely laid out ahead of time. I... I'm thankful, I suppose, but when they're set out for us like this, it feels kind of... <laughs> On the table in the corner, those two casually left tissues and wet wipes. All their experience kind of makes their preparations here seem a little graphic. We killed time in the track team club room after that, and it's just around midnight now. Around seven, a teacher had come to make sure the rooms were empty, and she came around again at nine to make sure all the doors were locked. We'd gotten through both checks by keeping quiet. Megumi was totally carefree, of course, saying, It's like we're in a spy movie. Easy for her, but my heart had been pounding nonstop, worrying about what we'd do if she found us. Then, thinking we'd probably had the building to ourselves, we'd climbed up to the second floor room. I'd lit a small lamp, hoping that the light wouldn't leak outside as long as we kept the curtains closed. And this is how we found the room. Please don't comment on the things on the table. I don't think I'll be able to explain. Sachi-san suddenly went quiet after looking around the room. Uh, I don't have any words either. I mean... A after this, we'll be, um... 
What should I do? How do we get started? Do I say something? What should... While I was debating with how to proceed, Hina tugged on my arm. You can't just ask that so bluntly. Why is Hina acting just like she usually does? Sachi-san quietly giggled beside me as all my blood went rushing to my head. Well, we couldn't just stand there, so Hina and I sat down on the futons. Sachi-san and Megumi took places in front of us. I've been possessed a few times now. Usually the two of them have something they want to eat or somewhere they want me to take them. Those times I was just lending them my senses a little. But just once. We did an experiment to see just how far their possession could go, and Megumi took over my body. It was an odd experience. I couldn't move a finger, but my body seemed to be walking around all on its own. Once was enough for me, and I made them swear never to do it again. But today I'm going to be possessed like that once again. I propose this and I'm prepared, but I'm still a little scared. In a few moments we're going to be possessed by spirits, and then Hina and I... I reflexively grabbed her hand. Oh, is that why they like became solid? Can she? Yeah, okay. Looks like Hina. Why? Why can Hina see them now? Hina's eyes were fixed right on Megumi, who was sitting across from her. They were clearly focused on her. Well, I get. Well, that must be. That must be a relief to Hina. You know, she no longer has to wonder if Yuna has gone insane or something. Suddenly, we're doing introductions again. The pace sure has gotten mixed up, but now it's nice and relaxed, like Hina. I feel a little less nervous now, too. This girl really is amazing. Does she... Really understand what we're going to be doing? Or that she's really seeing spirits right in front of her? That she's going to be possessed and we're going to, um, have sex? She's looking at Megumi's hairstyle like all that means nothing to her. Yeah, the tension's really evaporated. If she's doing this on purpose, then Hina really is incredible. I doubt she is, though, which is still pretty incredible. Oh, 
そのやっちゃってくださいそうねそれじゃあお借りするわねお,お邪魔します Is Hina ready? Do you think about asking Hina if she's ready? I guess they just assume. They said, Sachi san approaching me and Megumi moving toward Hina. They pulled right up to us and. <laughs> oh my god, I love how Hina's got like that little side glance going. Like, ugh, oh, we're really doing this, okay. I suddenly felt the weight lifting from my body. All right, next time we will continue this and looks like we're going to take it from Sachi's perspective. So I hope you all can wait till the next one comes out to see what happens. But as always, uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching and thanks for listening and take care.